Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, the day has finally come. We finally have brand new Apple Silicon Max to test out. And the first game that I'm going to be showing you today is Grand Theft Auto V, which has always been a popular choice. So the first MacBook I managed to get my hands on is a 14 inch M1 Pro with eight core CPU and a 14 core GPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I also bought a second M1 Pro and this comes with the 10 core CPU, the 16 core GPU and also 16 gigabytes of memory. And today I'll be demonstrating how these MacBooks run Windows games like Grand Theft Auto V and what method you should be using to run those games. I'll also be comparing this to my M1 MacBook Air 2020 with 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. So the first method I'm going to talk about today is called Parallels. And this is a virtual machine software that allows you to run Windows 11 ARM on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And this is quite an interesting method for running Windows games because most Windows games are built for the x86 platform. However, Windows 11 ARM can emulate x86 software and in turn the M1 chip is virtualizing that operating system. So we've got one layer of emulation and one layer of virtualization. On top of the game itself, we also have the overhead of having to run the entire Windows 11 ARM operating system as well. It's actually very impressive that we get gaming performance out of this at all. So here we have Grand Theft Auto V running through Windows 11 ARM on Parallels version 17. And this is my M1 Pro with 10 CPU cores, 16 GPU cores, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. To get the maximum performance out of your virtual machine, you can only assign up to half of your CPU cores and half of your RAM. If you try to assign any more than this, then the virtual machine will actually get slower. So therefore, it is relatively impressive that GTA 5 runs at all on this computer. And even though it doesn't look like much, this is actually performing at almost double the frame rate of my original MacBook Air with the M1 chip. That's partially down to the increased amount of RAM, but also the increased GPU core count and also CPU core count plays a part in this too. So here we're gonna do a comparison with the base M1 Pro, which is on the left, which only has eight CPU cores and 14 GPU cores as well as my original M1 MacBook Air with eight CPU cores and eight gigabytes of RAM and eight GPU cores. So there's definitely a huge difference between the M1 Pros at the top and the original M1 at the bottom. However, there is less of a difference between the M1 Pro with eight CPU cores and the M1 Pro with 10 CPU cores. I think that in this particular instance, the amount of RAM is going to have the biggest effect on the overall performance of this game when running through parallels. If you're interested in running Windows games like GTA 5 through parallels on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please check out my Windows gaming tutorial I'll leave a link to this in the description. It's going to teach you how to install Windows 11 ARM and Parallels, as well as go through the next method I'm going to show you now, which is Crossover, the compatibility layer. So the next method I'm going to talk about is Crossover. So as you can tell, Crossover is performing much better than the Parallels version of this game, and that's because Crossover has access to the full resources of the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. And that's because Crossover is a compatibility layer that is built on something called Wine, and this directly translates Windows graphics API calls into macOS compatible API calls. And here we're getting much closer to native level performance. Even on the original M1 chip, we were getting about 40, 50 frames per second. But now with the upgraded M1 Pro and the additional CPU cores, RAM and GPU cores, we're getting sometimes close to 90 or 100 frames per second. Now between the base M1 Pro, which has two fewer CPU cores and two fewer GPU cores, there's actually not that much difference between them. It looks like there is about six or 7% difference between these two particular M1 chips. So I'd say that if you're looking for a MacBook that can play GTA 5, then the M1 Pro is definitely in that league. Just make sure that you use the crossover software rather than parallels. However, crossover is not perfect. This particular version of the game has issues with the keyboard. So you're not able to use the keyboard. You have to use a controller in order to play this version of the game. Also, Crossover has historically not been compatible with many forms of DRM, including the Rockstar Social Club. Therefore, in order to be able to install this on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac and run it through Crossover, you have to use a cracked version of the game, which has the Rockstar Social Club completely stripped out of it. However, this is something that might change in the future. Somebody in my Discord called Game.Different has figured out a way in order to make Crossover work with the Rockstar Social Club and also completely fix the keyboard bug and even potentially play online as well. I'll be doing a tutorial on this in the future once I have more details and I've been able to test it for myself. But anyway, as you can see, Crossover is definitely the way to run this game. And the M1 Pro does a very good job increasing its performance, especially now that we have these beautiful 120 hertz displays. It's nice to see that this game is definitely taking advantage of that new screen with frame rates in the upper 60 to 90 range on average. 
Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you want me to test any more games on my M1 Pros, please let me know. I'm also going to be getting an M1 Max chip very soon. I'll be doing further testing on GTA 5 and other games too. If you have a request, please leave it in the comment and I'll make sure to follow up. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.